Imagine a 2000 horsepower, 24 cylinder, liquid cooled, no camshaft aircraft engine. Today we are going to delve deeper into an engineering marvel that was widely accepted as the next generation of aircraft piston engines. This behemoth was capable of turning at 4000 rpm while propelling the fastest allied fighter. It was one of the largest and most complex aircraft piston engines ever created, so powerful that a 1500 horsepower Merlin powered Spitfire felt like a beginner's aircraft. Succeeding the World War I aircraft engine, the Napier Lion, the British engine company developed two air-cooled H-block engines that went into production. The 16-cylinder Rapier and 24-cylinder Dagger were considered masterpieces of design by Frank Halford, a prominent British aircraft engine designer, but were never suitable for air combat due to unresolved recent cooling issues. They both had poppet valve system and it was considered that a sleeve valve setup was superior technology. According to Sir Harry Ricardo's study, he deemed the puppet valve system unsuitable for engines above 1500 horsepower. The target for the next generation engines was 1 horsepower per cubic inch of displacement. There was a belief that an engine with a multitude of smaller cylinders would be more compact, lighter and just as powerful as any similar engine with fewer cylinders. This is why various 24 cylinder concepts had been conceived. In 1929, David Naper's grandson, Montague, sketched a diesel H24 cylinder sleeve valve water-cooled engine to diversify the portfolio. Following his death in 1931, the Napier company, along with Halford, continued with the development, and while the diesel development was abandoned in 1933, a few small-scale engines were created to test the sleeve valve system. As per the Air Ministry's order from 1937, Halford designed a new high-power petrol unit. Although different, a part of the new engine was based on the diesel. The Sabre continued the tradition of naming Napier aircraft engines after swords. During its development, engineers were keenly aware of the strengths and weaknesses of prior engines, and thus the Sabre featured the best Napier could offer. Essentially, the Sabre was created by merging two engines into a single output shaft. The H-block setup provided a more ideal 24-cylinder configuration compared to an X24 Vulture engine. Superior liquid cooling was adopted, and the recently studied and tested sleeve valve technology proved incredibly capable of delivering high volumetric efficiency. The base of the engine consisted of a two-piece aluminum crankcase with seven main bearings for each crankshaft. The middle bearing was slightly wider, and both crankshafts were identical. A single-piece six-throw unit, similar to a V12 engine. The timing was set to simultaneously fire a cylinder of each crankshaft. The cylinder blocks were cast in six cylinder pieces, and the left and right blocks were interchangeable. Unlike the raper and dagger, the cylinders were horizontally placed and all the accessories were mounted above or below the engine. The unique sleeve valve system made the heads incredibly compact with a simple function to seal off the combustion chamber and hold twin spark plugs per cylinder. The sleeve drive shaft was driven at half the crankshaft speed and powered sleeve operating crankshafts through worm gears. Due to the nature of the mechanism, the sleeves turned 56 degrees and the bottom sleeve had to be mirrored as it turned the other way. 
with two intake and two exhaust ports at the sides of the cylinders. The intakes were positioned at the top and bottom of the engine, while the exhaust was routed through two ports into the middle section into a single pipe. Interestingly, the rear placed two-speed single-stage supercharger providing 0.9 mar of boost was driven by torsion bars running inside the sleeve drive shafts. At the front, multiple compound gears mesh the crankshafts together, reducing the propeller speed to 0.2741. The four-blade prop had a diameter of 4 meters, and the fastest Sabre-powered aircraft could reach speeds of 700 km per hour, most notably the Hawker Typhoon and Hawker Tempest. The first testing occurred in January 1938 at a limited output of 1350 horsepower. By March, the test displayed a power of 2050 horsepower, and by the summer of 1938, the Air Ministry's 100 hour test proved a reliable 2200 horsepower with a displacement of 37 liters or 2228 cubic inches. The target output was nearly reached. By the end of the year, a 2400 horsepower output had been reported. The Napier Sabre was meticulously developed, but closer to the production launch, it was rushed into the battlefield at the beginning of the war. For this reason, mistakes were made, as castings were improperly cleaned, and machine cuts often left inside the engine. Furthermore, it was found difficult to reach the required level of precision and quality in assembly, often resulting in engines being put together with broken piston rings and insufficient sleeve quality. Fortunately, Bristol was eager to help, bringing much more experience with the technology. The early years with the Sabre were tough, and the engine didn't receive positive feedback from mechanics and pilots. Part of this was caused by not following the manufacturer's recommendations. Additionally, during cold weather, mechanics had to start these engines every two hours at night to prevent oil from congealing, keeping the beast ready for the next day. It was considered unreliable, leading to many forced landings. Oil feeding issues were frequent, causing overheating and even engine seizure. Despite the initial challenges, Napier seemed satisfied with the engine's reliability and began developing a superior supercharger for higher altitudes in 1942. However, the Napier company was sold, the supercharger development was ditched, and the new owner significantly improved its reliability. By 1944, the Sabre was delivering about 2400 horsepower and its reputation began to improve. The service overhaul lifespan grew from 25 to 250 hours. However, without the finer supercharger, the engine lacked power for fighting about 6,000 meters. Nonetheless, at lower altitudes, it was formidable, the fastest Allied aircraft engine, and notably faster than 12 cylinder Spitfires. During the battle at Normandy in 1944, these engines tended to ingest local beach sand, rendering typhoons useless without air filters. The aircraft had a large chin for cooling and intake, and a special momentum air filter had to be developed in a remarkably short time. It was shipped within a week to make the Sabres in France flyable again. The Hockey Typhoon and Hockey Tempest were more or less the only production aircrafts that adopted the Napier Sabre. Its reputation was rather poor, as problem solutions came a bit late, but they still proved important against German forces, mostly with Typhoons being the fastest low-altitude aircraft and a principal destroyer of V-1 bombs. One of the final versions with water and methanol injection was capable of 3000 horsepower, which was incredible considering that an American was major, made about 50% more power from twice the displacement. However, it was still an expensive power output, 
costing four to five times for each horsepower achieved compared to the Rolls-Royce Merlin. Interestingly, Napier experimented with a two-bank 12-cylinder and even a four-bank 32-cylinder version, a deafening two-stroke 4,000 horsepower fuel-injected engine was also tested, but never put into production. The Sabre's production quickly ended after the war. It was an expensive but respectable achievement with about 5,000 units produced. Currently, there are no running Sabres, despite a dozen of them existing in museums today.